Okay, in this quick little video, I want to help you get your Jabber for Windows installed and configured. Um, Jabber is a licensed feature, so I don't know which users are going to want to have this capability. Uh, but let me just show you as part of uh, your education on this subject how to go ahead and uh, get Jabber configured. And it'll also show you some uh, other information I think you'll find useful. We're going to look at several components. One, the user account in the uh, call manager, how to get to it, uh, and how I have set up your user ID, which is your extension number in your system. Your self-service ID is your extension number, and your PIN is your extension number. I'm going to show you how to add a, a extension number to your uh, device, and your device might be um, actually it might be a phone so if you register a phone but it's also going to be a jabber client so whether it's a phone or jabber you're going to add, you're going to add an extension number in the same way and then we have to assign the device a phone or a jabber is a device and a device is controlled by a user so i'll show you how to add um, the device to the user account i'll also point out the self-service portal uh, you can just point a browser at this uh, address and you'll see that you will have access to a lot of um, functionality uh, as a user. You don't have to go bother the sysadmin guy. Uh, you can do it yourself. And lastly, I'll show you how to install and configure Jabber for Windows. Uh, your network has some issues. I'm sure we'll work them all out, but one of them was DNS. So you have to have a DNS entry someplace on the network. I had to add it to the gateway just so I could get the thing configured. But imp1.cisco, uh, um, this is ciscolocal.com, needs to point to 1010.100.12. Okay, so this is uh, what we're going to cover in this short video. If you go um, just uh, point your browser at the IP address at the call manager, you'll see that uh, you have three choices here. You can log into the call manager. We can log into the self-care portal, uh, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. And this is also where you go to deal with your licensing. For the moment, we're going to go to the communications manager and log in. If you don't know the username and password, you probably should be in here. Go ahead and log in. And what I'd like to point out is if you first go to user management, end user, uh, um, you can just hit find. It'll bring up all the users in the system. Now, each user in the system has um, already been configured. And what I need you to know is that, uh, let's take a look here at Alexis. Um, <clears throat> if you click on the user ID, you'll notice that the user ID, and the way I've set this up, is the same as your self-service uh, ID and your PIN number. I made them all the same just to make it easy for folks uh, uh, until we get the system online that we could go ahead and change that. As it relates to Jabber, the other things you need to know is here in the home cluster, enable user for unified communications and I am in presence. So we want that box checked. And we also want to make sure that all the proper permissions, they need to be a standard uh, call manager and user. And they need to uh, have CTI access enabled. I've already set this up. You shouldn't have to do that. I just want you to know where it is. So for example, if you have problems with a password, uh, you know where to go and change it, right? And everybody's extension number is the same as their user ID and the same as their self-service uh, PIN number. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is go to devices, phone, and <clears throat> again, you can just hit the find button and it'll bring up all that has been configured. Now, what you want to do here, for example, is let's just go take one that I have already configured. So you don't have to do the base configuration. Just click on one. And what I want you to do at this point is just copy it. All right? Just copy it. And what we're going to do now is modify the copy. So 
I think we said we're going to work with the extension 8733, so let's change that. We'll erase the name. Uh, everything else that is here, just leave it alone. Skip down here where it says the user. And in this case, we want to select uh, 8733. That's who we're working with. Okay. That's the user. All of this other stuff has been configured for you. And then just go ahead and save that. All right, so what we've just done here is to create a common uh, service framework for extension 833. Now what we want to do for this Jabber client is add a DN. A DN is another word for destination number, in this case an extension number. So just go ahead and click that. We want extension number 8733. And the route partition is the base partition, Centrix base PT. And if you do that, it'll just go ahead and fill everything in here. Let me uh, copy Alexis's uh, name here so we can add that to the uh, Jabber name field. Everything else here, there's no need for you to change anything. It's all been filled in. Um, we can add stuff here uh, later uh, um, to pretty up the interface on the phone. But at the moment, just go ahead and apply that configuration. Uh, um, go ahead and save it, actually. And then uh, we can uh, go back to the here. And just under description, let's go ahead and put the name in there. So go ahead and save it. There's, the device hasn't been configured yet, so you can't apply it. But don't worry about that. So now if you go back to device, and uh, um, you go to phone, and you say find everything, we should now see Alexis. Okay. So all we've done here, guys, is to copy this uh, existing Jabber profile and make it available to another user. So that's pretty much all you need to know about configuring Jabber. The next thing we need to do is go back to that user, and we need to add the Jabber client to the devices that person controls. So Let's go into the user record, okay, user, and scroll down here until we uh, get to device association. Go ahead and select that. Go ahead and find. And we're looking for, if this was a phone, you'd go ahead and select it and add that phone to that user. But in this case, we're just adding a Jabber client because the uh, phone hasn't registered yet. And we'll go ahead and save selected changes. And uh, at that point, if you go back to the list, you'll see that the device has now been added as a device that this user can control. And go ahead and save that. And that's uh, pretty much it on the, in the case of the Jabber uh, configuration for a user. Uh, I showed you that if you go uh, to the IP address, you have the chance of selecting uh, um, the self-care portal and this portal you will use to configure uh, devices you can let the users do this themselves let me show you what that looks like so you would log in with your username and id which in your case is pretty much the same as your extension number and just go ahead and log in go ahead and make a water out of me And once you're into the self-care um, portal, uh, you'll notice that the users have the ability to make certain changes themselves. So across the top here, you see that they have access to phones. They have, and it shows all of the devices that they currently have. Now, I've got a couple of different phones, and I've got my Jabber. Uh, and this is where I would go to make changes uh, about those devices. And I can go to voicemail. This is where I can set up my preferences for a voicemail. And I can set up my I am in presence. 
as well as some general settings here, language, change my password, things of that ilk. Uh, the downloads will not contain anything useful in your deployment currently. So I just want you to know that where this is because there's a lot of things you can do yourself uh, uh, as a user. You don't have to be a system admin. You can go set up your phones. You can set up phone settings, speed numbers, services, uh, ring settings. Uh, see your call history, set up call forwarding, all kinds of things you can do here. So again, at the end of the day here, uh, after you install the Jabber client, and I'd like to use 10.5.6, and I'll explain why real quickly. This particular client doesn't take uh, uh, into consideration any of the security uh, certs. Now, as we move forward and want to use Jabber on our iPhones from Starbucks, we're going to have to address this whole area of certificates. But to get this going inside the office, download and install this. And when you bring it up, you're going to go to Advanced Settings. You're going to select Cisco I am in Presence. And down here, you want to select Use the following server. It should probably fill in imnp.onesiscolocal.com, or you may have to put in the IP address. Now, if you don't see this after you put in the IP address of 10.10.100.12, then you have a DNS problem, and you're going to have to get that fixed on your network. Uh, it has supposed to have been done but I have found uh, that I had to add my own DNS to get your system configured. So make sure you've got a DNS configured so that imp1.ciscolocal.com uh, points to 10.10.100.12. You can also put it in your host file on your computer. So go to, uh, go to your host file. Uh, which happens to be, if you don't know, it's in Windows, System32, Drivers, uh, etc. Host. Open that up and edit it and add in an entry that says 10.10.100.12 space imp1.ciscolocal.com. Okay, and then you go ahead and save this. The first time you use this, it wants a whole kind of name here. So I'm going to put in Dr. Voigt, which is my ID. Yours is going to be your extension number. And you can pretty much put anything you want in here. I'm going to put in CiscoLocal.com. Uh, and then my password, which in your case is the same as your uh, extension number. And uh, you're going to get this certificate uh, Error. Now, if you're using a later version of Jabber, it won't even let you do this. That's why I wanted to use this one for now. Just go ahead and accept it. Uh, and we're going to have to deal with the whole uh, concept of um, certificates if we're going to get uh, you guys up and running. So, yeah, as you can see here, uh, the Jabber client is up here. Um, and click on it here if you like it'll bring up contacts your recents your voice messages your meetings if you have a phone configured it's going to enable you to select down here your phone in which case you'll be able to use this client to control your telephone uh, or you can use this separately for i am uh, and presence go ahead and play with this get comfortable with, uh, with it and I'll, we'll talk about it at a later time uh, I just wanted to get Cisco the Jabber installed uh, because as we extend your collaboration out to the edges, when you add your Expressway Core and Expressway Edge servers, then we'll be able to get the proper certificates installed and you'll be able to run Jabber, uh, extend your office out to your iPhone and sit at Starbucks. Okay, hope you found this informative and thank you for watching.